Have you ever noticed how group practices and DSOs are all kind of starting to look the same? On this episode, we're gonna talk about how to differentiate your multi-site practice through branding. Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome to The 88 Show. This is the internet's only dental show where we talk about what matters most in marketing. I'm your host, Joshua Scott, and this is episode 113. Man, this month we are talking about group practice marketing and specifically how to build an effective multi-site strategy. And so I'm super excited for this episode. We're gonna get into four tips to help you do that. Obviously, the whole group practice DSO is a trend in dentistry. It's not going anywhere. I mean, trend's probably not the right word, but expansion is happening. And so we're gonna look at the numbers behind that. Uh, we're gonna look at the factors of why this is happening at this moment of time in the dental industry. And then even from our end, from Studio 88, man, we've been working with more and more group practices, uh, management teams, DSOs, leadership teams, and just give you some of our experience of what we've learned along the way as well. And so that's what's coming up on these episodes. Stay tuned for them. I'm gonna break down each point as we go along the way. And so today, here's the first one. Number one tip when it comes to building an effective multi-site strategy, brand always wins. All right, look, from Coca-Cola to small businesses and everybody in between, there is one rule of marketing you will not be able to get around, and that is brands always wins. It always wins. And the reason because of that is you are building equity in people's minds, right? Brand is that story, it's that space in their heads of what they tell themselves about you. And so if you don't get in the brand, let's say all you do is, is direct response marketing, pay-per-click advertising, all those things designed to just get responses, all it takes for somebody to beat you in your area is to come in and spend more money. But if you can create a brand, now you're creating space in people's minds and good luck to the competitor that wants to come in. And so when it comes to branding with multi-site, here's where it gets tricky. There are really three different models that we can go with, depending on the model of the practice, the philosophy of what you're trying to do, uh, the location situation. And so let's look at kind of all three of those uh, before we go any further. So number one is it's all one brand. So we see this a lot with uh, group practices who are doing de novo startups, like startups from scratch. And let's say you've got like a generic name, like Lifetime Dental, right? So every time you start a practice, it's a Lifetime Dental. And so you just can perpetuate that, you can expand that and scale that no matter what the location, no matter what the area. If you're acquiring practices, this is harder, right? Because you can't just always switch a name because of the brand that's already established. And so really the advantage here to this type of model is you save marketing dollars. You save that budget because all your money is going towards this brand of lifetime dental. And so whether it's you know online with ads or it's in like radio or something like that, you're promoting this brand with multi, with multi site, multi locations to choose from. And so you get way more for your marketing budget, you get way more exposure, your brand is going further in people's minds because all they have to do is remember that one brand. All right, so that's, that's the first uh, strategy when it comes to branding. The second, the exact opposite, separate brands. So every practice we have is now a separate standalone brand. For example, you go into an area, Cypress Springs, and we have Cypress Springs Dental or Cypress Springs Family Dental, something like that. Usually these groups are focused on acquisitions, and so they're buying a brand, they're buying a practice, um, acquiring a already existing brand, and it would do more harm to change that than it does to just keep it the same. Because there's already this like community goodwill, there's already this name recognition associated for that, so let's just keep the brand as it is. The advantages here with this one is you have that community feeling still intact, right? That practice, like if it's Cypress Springs Family Dental, feels like it's part of Cypress Springs. Uh, and so it's a really great play to position against some of the corporate models coming in, right? You get the Aspen Dentals and the Heartland Dentals and, and Comfort Dentals, and then you put Cypress Springs Family, well, that's going to stand out. That's going to be more approachable, okay? So that's number two. And then the third strategy is literally just a hybrid of those. We see this all the time. 
Some groups have a single brand for how they expand in some locations, whether it's uh, uh, by a state, it's geographical, they're in Georgia, and everything in Georgia becomes Peachtree Dental, right? Uh, but then they have uh, existing brands, separate ones where they retain it. And so maybe they're expanding into Tennessee, but they buy a local practice there and they keep the brand. Uh, and so we've worked with practices like this too. Most DSOs, most group practices right now probably fall somewhere into this hybrid model because they end up in some situations where, at, with acquisitions where it's more beneficial to keep what's already existing. Here's the benefit to this, right? Is you get the best of both worlds. You can expand with your startups and you have this kind of generic practice that you can put whatever you want under, but then you have the flexibility of also creating community-based practices that fit well and retain their goodwill and name recognition. And so, guys, those are the three strategies when it comes to branding a multi-site practice. I think out of all the four tips we're gonna talk about over the next few weeks, this is by far the place where you have the biggest opportunity to take advantage of it. I think right now in the DSO group practice space, not many people are thinking about brand and consistency and how that plays out. And at some point, brand is gonna be that edge. It's gonna be that advantage that you have in that space, in that community, but also with recruiting and with hiring uh, talented clinicians. And so three action steps. Here's how you can implement brand in a group practice. All right, number one is standardize the design, the, the text, the copy, the photos, everything. Create a standard design that when people see it, they immediately recognize it. The problem is we get over tons of different sites, things start looking slightly different, and now we don't have brand consistency. Number two, develop a brand guide that you can give your practices to go, this is how we represent the logo. This is how we you know, design a piece so that it creates consistency across those practices. And then number three, create a acquisition template for your marketing plan, for your brand. When you acquire practice, this is what happens with the brand. Uh, create a de novo template. So when you start up something from scratch, here's how we implement the brand. Create those templates so when you do acquire and you do start up, it's a no brainer, it's all in place, it's easy to go. Got it? Guys, I hope that helps. Uh, no, tip number one of how to build an effective marketing strategy on multi-site uh, practice. Uh, you'll find this month's article down below, group practice marketing. Hit it up, let me know what you think. Best place to find me is on Instagram, at Joshua Scott. Would love to hear from you, man. Reach out to me with any comments, questions, shout outs, anything like that. See you next episode.